Hi everyone and welcome to Saluso. Now at the time of filming this video, we're only a few days away from seeing Avengers Endgame. The final part of a 20 plus movie saga. So I thought it'd be a good idea to turn the clock back and look at the watches from the very first movie in this series. And that is of course 2008's Iron Man starring Robert Downey Jr. as the titular character, Tony Stark. Now to give a little bit of context, we need to remember that back in 2008, the Marvel Cinematic Universe didn't exist. There weren't these billion plus dollar movies being made. It wasn't really, it was, it was very much an experiment. And obviously being a superhero movie, it had to be very effects heavy. That would have driven the budget up a lot. So to make this sort of thing work, it was a movie full of product placement, including brands from everything from Dell to Burger King to Audi, all the way to, of course, Bulgari, which was the, the sponsor when it came to Tony Stark's watches. So today we're going to look at Tony Stark's watch in this movie, as well as another watch that isn't as mentioned when you talk about the watch that Iron Man wears, because I think it represents actually something quite interesting in terms of Tony's arc throughout this movie. But first let's talk about the watch that probably everyone expects me to mention, which is of course the Bulgari, specifically the Bulgari Diagonal Retrograde Moonface. Now this 42mm watch was part of a 350 piece limited edition released by Bulgari in 2008, and at the time it cost $45,000. So definitely the type of watch that a billionaire playboy philanthropist would probably be able to afford. And it definitely matches Tony's extravagance. You know, he is not exactly the king of subtlety throughout this movie or really any of the Marvel movies. So it stands to reason he's going to have a pretty, a pretty shoddy watch. But it's also important to remember that in addition to being really rich and extravagant, Tony is also very much, he's very into tech. He's into modern tech, but also throughout this movie, you see him working on old cars. You can tell he still appreciates mechanical technology as much as sort of digital and electronic technology. And I think that this Bulgari actually does fit the bill in that sense. It's a triple retrograde watch. So it has retrograde date and day, which wasn't particularly unprecedented, but it does look very good and it is a very difficult complication to make regardless but also it features a retrograde moon phase. Now normally moon phases are represented as a disc that rotates as the days go by, but this one actually features a retrograde moon phase. So it has the different stages of the moon laid out in an arc across the bottom of the dial around the six o'clock, and then it has a retrograde indicator that points across and indicates what the moon phase is. It's a different approach, and also you need to think of, for someone like Iron Man, there's a lot of symbology in terms of like, the symbol of his arc reactor on his chest, a lot of circles going on. So it does kind of sort of mimic that and it shows progress, which is, I think, a key theme throughout this movie in terms of how Iron Man's character progresses. On top of that, this was also for Bulgari a very important watch because it was one of their first manufacturer movements. The 46 Joule BVL 347 was really the flagship for Bulgari in the sense that they actually were moving away from sort of that stereotype of just being a jeweler that makes watches to establishing themselves as a proper and respected watchmaker. And this was well before the Octo Finissimo, which is what they're known for now. So it was a very interesting time for Bulgari at that time. And I think that it perfectly marries the concept of Tony Stark's sort of emergence into a new life as much as it was Bulgari's new progression into a new position in the watch market and changing their perceptions as well. So I think it's a great pick for Tony Stark's watch, and especially for Tony Stark's watch at that point in the film. Now this watch obviously isn't available today, and it's really hard to find it even on secondhand listings because it was limited, because it's a very sought after watch in the sense that it was Iron Man's watch. Probably a lot of people who bought it, who could actually afford it, probably wanted to keep it. And when you consider that Iron Man moved away from Bulgari in the subsequent films. He moved on to Jaeger and then he had his little gauntlet smartwatch thing in Civil War. There weren't any extra sort of Iron Man edition watches or any other tie-ups for Bulgari. So it is rare in that sense as well as the fact, like I said, it's limited to 350 pieces. So I couldn't find any active listings for it for sale now. I did find a few old auctions from a few years ago where it was predicted to sell for eight to 12,000 US dollars, but nothing definitive. However, Bulgari also did release a non-limited version, very similar, using the same movement, and that was the reference 102026. The key difference between this and the DGP42 GMP, aside from the more complicated reference, was that the non-limited version featured less rose gold on the dial itself, so on the date and the date registers, it's just white enamel, 
And then also it doesn't have as elaborate a design in terms of the dial decoration. The watch used in Iron Man had a really nice sort of deco design, in, looked like it was engraved onto the dial. It's really, really cool and adds a lot of character, whereas the non-limited version was essentially just a black dial with the registers on top. Still very complicated, still the same movement, but obviously a different watch in terms of attention to detail. And that watch, there are a few listings for it online, it currently goes for around 18,000 US dollars. So definitely cheaper than the 45,000 that the limited version was when it was new. But at the end of the day, you need to consider this is a precious metal watch, so there's going to be depreciation for that. So it does fall roughly in where you'd think, considering that it's still a very complicated watch and not exactly a watch that you see every day. Now, moving on to another watch that perhaps isn't as obvious or as highlighted when one talks about Iron Man's watches, and that's because it was only seen for a brief moment at the beginning of the film. And that is the Hublot Big Bang. Now these days it's probably nothing new to consider Hublot and product placement. You see them doing tie-ups and sponsorships with pretty much absolutely everyone from Formula One and Ferrari to soccer to music. They pretty much sponsor or get ambassadors for everything. But this was 2008. You need to remember that this was still very early on in Jean-Claude Biver's tenure as uh, CEO of Hublot and they had only just released the Big Bang and that was Jean-Claude Biver's baby when it came to Hublot because it represented a new beginning for Hublot in the 21st century. Released in 2005, the Big Bang tripled Hublot's orders in that first year of release alone. So it definitely made the impact but they were still trying to build themselves up and become this ubiquitous brand that they are today. So even though it wasn't necessarily shown outright in the movie, it was still shown, so that probably still had its effect. And even though they weren't the main title watch sponsor, it still probably did give them a lot of positive press. And for good reason, the watch makes sense for the character, especially at that time in the movie. He had gone to Afghanistan to do a weapons demonstration, so obviously, you know when you're a billionaire, you don't want to be walking around with your $45,000 watch on in the middle of the desert and in a war zone, so you wear your beater watch, your $13,000 steel ceramic and rubber watch. And it makes sense, it's a very rugged watch both in its construction and also in terms of its movement. It wasn't anything particularly sophisticated, it was based on a Valjoux 7750, but it was reliable. And it still meets that criteria of Tony Stark's love of mechanical things, but also making things futuristic using combination of materials. It is a very Tony Stark watch, and especially for Tony Stark at that point in the film, when he was in a situation where he needed something that was a little bit more rugged than some of his dress watches. Now since that movie there hasn't really been a lot of emphasis on Iron Man's watches, so it'd be interesting to see what would Iron Man still be wearing today in terms of his mechanical watch game, if he still even wears one. Especially if Endgame is going to be his last outing. We don't know, there's still mysteries, and at the time of filming this I still haven't seen the movie, but I'm definitely looking forward to seeing it. But let me know in the comments below what you think of Iron Man's original watches. Do you think they match his character then? Do you think they match his character in general now that we've had 10 years to get to know Tony Stark? And of course, if you like the video, please do like it and share it. And if you like the content that I've been putting out, do make sure to subscribe to the channel as I put new watch videos out every week. In any case, thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.